Put your guy quiet in here. Yeah. Good evening and welcome to tonight's board meeting. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Shapiro? Yes. Trustee McGreal? Here. Trustee Dizelle? Here. Trustee Ryan? Here. Trustee Michaels? Here. Trustee Dwyer? Here. Mayor Kitchen? Here. We have a quorum. If you would, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first order of business for me this evening, I have a proclamation which I'm going to read into the record. Whereas J. Morton Sterling championed the first Arbor Day in Nebraska in 1872 with the planting of over one million trees. And whereas trees provide the environment benefit of reducing erosion, lowering heating costs, moderate temperature, clean the air, reduce storm water runoff, produce oxygen, and create wildlife life habitat. And whereas trees provide a renewable resource benefit by providing paper for our books and wood for our homes. And whereas trees provide an economic benefit by increasing property value, enhancing the vitality of business districts, and beautifying our communities. Whereas the planting of trees is one of the most important actions that individuals can participate in because it provides a healthier environment for future gen generations. Trees for this reason form an important link between cultures and people and whereas with the advent of the Emerald Ash Borer the village of Alsop is developing proactive changes to its urban forestry program to develop a suitable healthy and expanding urban tree canopy to guarantee these benefits to, to the residents of the village and now therefore I, Patrick Kitching, Mayor of the Village of Alsop, do hereby proclaim April 28, 2017 as the Village's Arbor Day for the Village of Alsop. On that day at 1.30 p.m., the Village will be planning a new Bradford Pier at George Washington School with staff and students to enhance, enhance the campus and provide an example of the stewardship role students and residents play in maintaining this important natural resource. I encourage residents to, to participate in the planting and provide an example to the community of shared importance of this activity. Signed, Mayor Patrick Kitching. Next up, I um, have some gentlemen here this evening who have uh, come up with a very interesting proposition for the village. Uh, you're familiar with these gentlemen. They're from GSI. That's the, that's the company that brought us our LED street lighting at, uh, that is paying for itself. Gentlemen, would you come forward? You're not going to bring the whole troop up here? <laughs> oh, I knew there was more than one of you. <laughs> Microphone, please. You want to grab a mic, please, right, right in the middle table. Okay. And before you leave, would you please give uh, your business card to our Madam Clerk? Thank you. You have to hold that microphone close to your mouth so it'll pick up. Well, it was good. It's good to see all of you. Um, as Mayor Kitchen said, um, a couple of years ago, we came in front of all of you, um, sort of being trailblazers, and we were selling at that time uh, brand new LED type technology, um, which was networked. And you actually are the only community in the entire state of Illinois that has an entire network that has street lights that are actually networked where in real time <coughs> you can um, be able to control them, see if they ever go in and out. Um, and one of the nice things about it is the analytics side of it now is beginning to identify you know, where there might be issues with wiring, um, any sort of um, problems with uh, junction boxes and that. So that will also help reduce your maintenance. And so one of the things we're very proud of is, of course, taking that entire village and sort of putting it on the screen. And at that time, I think we talked about how smart communities are beginning to find their way to the city of Chicago, 
um, throughout the entire state of Illinois. We've heard a lot of our leaders talk about smart communities, connected cars, and how the revenue side of this becomes now um, the next uh, phase of what's going to be put together to move us into the 21st century. And so what we've done is sort of taken your infrastructure that you've done so far, you've taken advantage of the savings, and we'd like to show you how now you could take advantage of actually begin to generate the revenue side of it. But one of the things we're very proud about is also how we're going to make not just the city of Elsip um, closer together and being able to be more connected, but how do we connect you as 104 square miles of 21 communities that you're a part of a consortium? To us, that makes you so much more valuable to our partners, like the operators or the advertisers or what we call an IoT, um, um, the, all the IoT type applications that are coming to be able to do all of this smart city community uh, infrastructure. And so what we'd like to do, if you give us a few minutes, we'd like to show you, you know, what we're planning on for the 21 communities and how we feel that you will be an integral part of this, not only as a participant, but also as an enabler to be able to take all of the commercial and industrial side of what you have in this uh, village and be able to export it to regionally, statewide, and hopefully even worldwide. Okay, because of, as you probably know, we're all connected everywhere in the world. Anyone can sell a pair of gym shoes from anywhere in the world. What would really be interesting is can we sell a pair of gym shoes, for instance, that's maybe on 127th of Pulaski, if there's a store that was selling gym shoes. And so that's where we're sort of trying to, <coughs> very much in the ideal world where the brick and mortar is beginning to take advantage of what we're calling this digital, uh, sort of, a, not a better word, really a digital mall that's all around us right now that we don't ever capture any of the rest. So, sorry for the long-winded uh, talk, but I'd like to turn it over to my colleague. Good evening, my name is uh, Sam Yusuf with GSI. I'm gonna just take you through a quick presentation along with my colleague, Mary Beth, to explain and carry on from what Hossam was just discussing with all of you. So one of the key elements that he brought up was what we talked about a few years ago when we went and converted all of your streetlights to LED streetlights and put this network in place. And so he talked about the savings model not necessarily what we're looking at, what we're going to look at right now, which is a revenue generating model, but from a savings perspective, reduction of energy, reduction of maintenance. I believe the numbers that we looked at back then is you were looking to save a hundred plus thousand dollars. You got some D, uh, per year, you got some DCO incentive money back from the state of about three hundred thousand dollars. This represents the next phase. How do you utilize your current infrastructure, leverage it, and look at it as an asset? So this map outlines ELSIP. And what Hossam had mentioned is where your community stands in relative terms of all of the other communities that are surrounding you, the other 20 plus communities in the Southwest, in the Southwest area. It gives you a little inventory of what we did a few years ago, 1,255 lights, I believe about 1,000 of them were changed back then. Mm -hmm. You look at the FAU routes. And so these are the street lights that have not been changed over yet. And so what we look at, the reason we're looking at these is because they present an opportunity that these streets cross the major arteries of the village. And why that's important is that as we look to change them out, is that this is the model that we looked at before is energy savings, the customer savings, what the payment was, and we looked at a customer savings retained by the village. I'm going to get to the slides fairly quickly to go through them. As we look at this sort of a model to add to these FAU routes. And the reason we look at that is that these are assets to the village. And so how do we turn them into an asset as we look at this sort of technology to add on to it? Yes, we can go ahead and place LED lights on them. We look at a wi building a Wi-Fi network on top of them. Ultimately, this is what we look at getting at, is that this represents uh, a digital banner that can be placed on those routes. And the reason that it becomes important is those routes cut right through the artery of the village. And so what you take advantage of is being able to take advantage of the vehicles that pass these routes, what they would be seeing. 
what you'd be building on that network would be these sorts of digital banners. Advertisers that would be able to utilize those banners for their advertisement and marketing purposes. Revenue that's generated in that. And part of that infrastructure change is what we look at So the LED lights, as we looked at, was an infrastructure energy maintenance bill gets to a point where you're saving. Now we've turned that into actually being able to generate revenue at a certain point by adding those banners, those types of kiosks, being able to utilize your lighting infrastructure to add this new technology. And so what we look at, this is sort of the digital mall that Sam had had mentioned, as you have vehicles that pass through them, you look at you look at it, I guess, compare it to a digital billboard. So right now, as you see billboards, people pay to advertise on billboards. So what you're utilizing is now you have several hundred of these billboards that are owned by the village. And so they're able to, in real time, be able to, their network, and they're able to relay messages from advertisers, either they're local or they could be national, they could be obviously regional. And as vehicles pass through them, that's how you're looking at generating by selling ad space to them. I'll grab this mic. <laughs> Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Anyone? Hi, I'm Mary Beth Coaches, and I'm with GSI. And is that one working better? Can you hear me? Speak right into it. This one sounds a little louder. So one of the strategies, one of the cutting edge eras is moving the digital advertising, digital marketing, digital sales to not just pushing content to every device, to everybody that you have a car, your cars are smart, they all have computers in them. So if you took the city local push of advertising using digital banners, using digital kiosks, interactive with the data in very beautiful ways, what if you could also collect information on who's passing by that mall, that store, that retail? And this is today's technology. This is available. But if we could collect what region that car that's traveling past is coming mm. from, it's not local. Mm. They don't, they're not a resident. They can actually see the mall, and maybe you push an individually targeted message to their interest, just like Groupon, just like a number of shopping Amazon. I'm interested in these products. They're right there. I can push that marketing because I know that's a regional uh, location that I want to target. I can mm -hmm. also attract my social networks, which Facebook, Twitter, etc. I now can reach targeted local messaging to reinforce online, yeah. offline, real store property to increase my retail, and I can track it. And I can also service the community with local events, that type of messaging. So you no longer are just having digital banners, digital billboards, digital information, having all the Wi-Fi connectivity through the lights and these kiosks that we're talking about. But you can also maximize the information, the content to the consumer you're targeting and track that revenue. Increasing revenue for just digital advertising is 6 to 8% nationally. Why not bring that to your own communities? That said, it also can provide you with, how will we say, sharing of data across city agencies. If you have a growing economy and, and an, a retail that is growing, you can also bring that to the industry, the factories that are produce, producing products, and maybe targeting local products to the buyer, the consumer, such as bread manufacturer might have certain types of buns or maybe market to the various restaurants. You can track their increased sales as well, which drives economic development, which attracts more people to the area, growing residential, which feeds other areas, urban development, etc. So if you focus on driving increased retail sales with digital marketing and leveraging the infrastructure you pay, why would you not get that extra revenue and service your community? So this is capabilities we can bring to you, leveraging what you have. So that was... The proposition, yeah? Have I captured that? Next slide. So here would be an example. Oh my goodness. I think I'm going to have to increase my prescription spend. So the business outcomes that are out there, 
and i have a ton of resources that will leave some handouts so you can check some of the research national as well as local but if you're capturing the local market insights and you're able to just target those individual messages i care about animals here is a sale on dog food i'm there um, they always eat it but i could actually link my buyer behavior to my friends my network i have over 1200 followers I'm going to tell them, go to this store, they have what you need. I can also, however, track buyer behavior to really try and drive the activity, the behaviors that I want to grow my community, my mall. I can also look at the KPIs, key performance indicators, that tell me I'm actually being successful. Did I get a million dollars more? Is that my success metric? It might just be an increased amount of store visits by physical people walking into the door. I can track time of day. When did they come in? You know, when should I have more staff? Maybe I need to grow my employment. All of this can track with your key performance indicators mm -hmm. and what targets you define to be success, and we want to help you with that, as well as new revenue streams. Think about if I know that I can target messaging for a mall area with 50 retail stores, and I can actually add a revenue stream for concierge. Okay, I'm a consumer. I want to buy everything online. I want to have someone package it and just be ready for me when I pick it up whenever I pick it up. I would pay an extra buck for that app so that I can have concierge. You can start driving new paths of revenue enabled by your data. That's all I have. Conceptually, what we look at is taking advantage of your current infrastructure. And the way we, I go back to this this route, the, some of the most heavily traveled routes throughout the entire state run right through LSIP. In the sense that, yes, we've talked about consumers, we've talked about trying to generate retail sales. Some of that may be applicable to LSIP, but what's more beneficial that we believe in the long run is really taking advantage of the routes that you currently have and the traffic that travels through them. So it's not necessarily pushing content to the residences of LSEP, but pushing content to the people that travel through LSEP. Because that's really a significantly much, much larger audience than the 20,000 people that reside in LSEP. You're going to be talking about hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people that travel these routes each year. So those ultimately become your consumers. So you are leveraging your infrastructure, generating revenue based on who comes through LSEP. Who uses LSIP? And that's how you turn your infrastructure into an asset. I don't know if we have any questions. I think I missed the part where you said that uh, you're going to put this together without any cost to the village of Alsip. Did I miss that part? Yes, you didn't miss that part, but ultimately that's, that, that is the goal. And so when I say ultimately is that when we, so typically these move in stages. You take the lighting, for example. We started with some lights that went up, so you can see how they look, how they work, how the network uh, took effect, how you were able to control them, and then it expanded for there to the rest of the village. This works exactly the same way, is that some of these units end up going up, you end up seeing them work, you look at the data that's being collected, you look at the advertisers that are looking to advertise and what they're looking to pay, and you generate a revenue model. That revenue model then is presented, and there's basically three different ways that it goes from there. So to expand it throughout the entire village, it's depending on how much the village wants to make. So assuming the village says, hey, we want to buy the system, we'll pay for it to expand, the village makes, let's say, makes, and these are just numbers, let's say they make 90% of whatever that revenue is. We are taping this, so just. No, I, I'm just that's, <laughs> that's an example. So. Let's say they make 90%. The village says, you know what, we want you guys to take some of the risk. We'll pay for a portion of it, you pay for it, we'll manage it together then maybe it's 50-50. Well, it says we don't want to pay any of it. This is after it's been proven that it actually works and generates revenue. Projects how much what that future revenue is going to look like. The village can go back and say, you know what? We just want to take advantage. You guys run it, operate it, and pay us X for utilizing our infrastructure to run your system. And that sort of model, all three of those examples generate revenue for the village. They just generate revenues at different percentages. Could you give me a, an example of somewhere, some kind of a ballpark figure of what kind of revenue we could expect under the, the three scenarios that you've presented? Mm -hmm. I can present to you a scenario that's currently running and operating projections. Now, uh, not of the three scenarios, because it's different based on the region. 
So your region or your area is going to depend predominantly on vehicular traffic going through an area. Some areas, for example, let's say uh, Chicago Ridge. Chicago Ridge has a mall. Those mall, that mall may take advantage more of kiosks because they have a lot of pedestrian traffic. And so there's combinations that, like that that go into play. The number of residences within an area, the number of vehicles that travel through, it, those are all significant factors. That's why we talked about we do that uh, sort of proof of concept or that initial phase to generate what that revenue is going to actually look like. And so we look at sponsorship and ads at 325 screens, years between one and five, generating over $30 million. Years six and 10, $38.5 million. Yeah, sure for, sure for me. So the revenues are quite large. Gross revenues are quite large. Trustees, do you have any questions? Where, where can we see an example, a physical example of this being used? Well, there isn't any physical example here in Illinois. They're running in Kansas City. There's uh, units that are running in Stratton, Pennsylvania. In New York City is running a number of the kiosks. Downtown Chicago, outside the City Hall, has a banner. It has one of those virtual banners that are up on a street light or on a pole, and they run ads. If you go through Oak Park right now, they have similar, not this sophisticated, but they have smaller modular units that run single ads that somebody can go ahead and, and would pay for. And so that's kind of what we talk about is we're not talking about rolling it out throughout the village. We're talking about putting a certain number of units up on our dime and showing you that it works and that it generates revenue and what that revenue model is going to look like before we introduce phase or steps, not steps, but show you the comparison between one, two, and three. Can we get, can we get a... Um can we get some documents from it? We can review all these? Absolutely. Okay. Banners? Uh, the banners run with right, three by five on the. Well, I think it's a I think it's a wonderful concept. Uh, um, moving forward with the new board, uh, which will be taking taking place in a few weeks, I think it's something that uh, they actually should seriously consider pursuing, since Allsip was one of the first ones uh, to get involved with the LED lights, and uh, we beat the city of Chicago. Now they're trying to do it as well, um, and I think this revenue stream could turn into something that could be a godsend for the village since the village is looking for extra revenue streams moving forward. So I would definitely appreciate it and we'll need to see more information though. Any more questions? What we do is presenting documents and then also an outline of what this next phase will be and introducing units that we can get permission to go ahead and obviously install and demonstrate. Great. Uh, Mayor, the police chief has a comment. I'm just confused because when we do accident reports, are the Cicero Avenue and Pulaski poles ours? The light poles are ours that we maintain, however, they are along the right of way. The right of way of IDOT. IDOT would have to approve any kind of permits. So we've been in touch with IDOT. You can go ahead and see. Yeah, we've been in touch with IDOT. 
we actually did our homework. If I got the not, uh, we actually sent my daughter a request saying that we're looking at these routes. Here's the assets. Here's the inventory. Are you guys okay with us changing? And we've got a response back. Yeah, they're not ours. No, we don't have a program. My dad said we don't have a program to pay for it. So, and, and we'll so I'm sure. concern is meeting the street requirements, lighting requirements. And so they don't specify the type of unit. They specify what that spec is supposed to look like and meet. Now, they divide up into do we own them and operate them or do we just maintain what that spec is supposed to be? And in this case, you guys own them and maintain them, but you have to meet the minimum requirements that they have documented. So wouldn't there be a certain debate on revenue, who draws the revenue, the state versus ELSA? Well, they're not owned by the state. They're owned by, when I say threshold, that means the lighting output has to meet their specification. But they're owned and operated by the village. No, but you're absolutely right. I, mean, I think there's yeah. going to be a little bit of a tug of war if revenue streams are coming in on a state poll. No, 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 it's actually your point. Okay. They're your assets. So that's the whole thing. So like the Chicago, the city of Chicago, for instance, has their own poll. And if you want to put anything on it, you want to put sign or any piece of equipment, you need to pay us and share with us revenues that are generated by whatever that device is. And so they have that here. System. And actually, the operators, one of the things we've been doing is we've been working with the operators who are like the agents. Today, they, today, they are showing that the, their 5G networks, which are, people have been talking about this great new technology that's going to be coming because all these young men are using all these wonderful devices and they're just killing their babies. Yeah. And all this great new uh, technology is coming. What are you going to talk about? Every block, they're going to pull a base station. Today, I think if you look, you probably can maybe have three or four base stations in the entire village on very high powers. These are coming down to your street lights and they're beginning to talk about how we want to put one on every block. So from our perspective, this technology is coming. It's going to be how do we relinquish it to you know, third parties that you know that or do we find a way to be able to quantify it and make sure that just very much like our streets and our right of way that you know, they have to come to us because it's our network and you know not in here I think we're talking about now it's part of the Trustees, do you have any other questions? Gentlemen, um, I thank you very much for coming out and making your presentation tonight. Um, I know it's very impressive. I saw the one that you did at the Southwest Conference of Mayors. Um, there's other towns looking at this, but uh, also was the first to have a complete uh, smart, a smart system and uh, that we own. Um, some other towns aren't so lucky to own theirs. Um, they're working on it, but <clears throat> anyway. Um, this is kind of a gift I'm leaving behind. As, you, as many of you know, I'm retiring very shortly, and I wanted to, uh, to bring this in and, and introduce it. Uh, it would behoove the members of the new board to uh, follow through with this. Um, I, I, I don't see any downsides, and uh, the revenue stream created is, is really tremendous uh, for the village. So uh, please stay in touch, Sam, and we appreciate it. Yeah, we, we know you owe us one. We're waiting. <laughs> Thank you. And before you leave, may I please ask for your business cards? It'll make my life a lot simpler. Please. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I thank you. I know I have them from the past, but mm -hmm. this makes it easy. Thanks. Moving along, clerk's report. 
I have the presentation of the minutes of the April 11, 2017 special board meeting. I also have the presentation of the IDOT motor fuel tax allotment for March 2017 in the amount of $35,339.49. I have the presentation of the Freedom of Information Act report for March 2017. 28 requests were made. I have a request for approval of a resolution resolution finding continuing need for confidentiality of certain closed session minutes and that's all I have this evening attorney's report no report engineer's report I'll get over there and take a look at it. I'm kind of surprised. I thought they'd wait till the asphalt plant started operating. Well, they're talking about opening them next week. Okay, thanks for your report. At this point, we've reached the public forum. Is there anyone here this evening who wishes to address this board? Mayor, I, I, do, have, uh, I do have someone uh, out in the audience um, that is requesting uh, to come before the board for a um, presentation of a 6B uh, that was actually missed um, through different communications by our hall here. So if you wouldn't mind, his name is David Scott. It's from uh, Champ Incorporated. It Sir, please come forward. State your name for the record and please use the microphone so we get a good recording. Thank you. Scott David here uh, on behalf of on behalf of Pumping Solutions and Champ Industries. Can't hear you. Got to hold it. Hello. Oh. There you go. There you go. Sorry, not used to this. Uh, let me hand you a card before I forget. Thank you. I appreciate that. See, your repetition precedes you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Did I yell? No. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, we had submitted an application uh, to request and good evening, Mayor and, and Board of Trustees here. Uh, we had, uh, sorry, I'm going to do better. Um, we uh, are uh, seeking the support of the village to a 6B for the property at 12635 Hamlin Court. It is an industrial building. My client is here tonight. Uh, the, the client that's going to be buying the building and using the building is a company called Champ Industries. It is a sister company to Pumping Solutions, which is in Blue Island. Uh, Scott is here to we'll talk about the company, if you guys have any questions about that. Uh, the company is in the business of manufacturing and distributing uh, industrial seals and pumps. Uh, sure. My name is Scott Champlin. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, I started my business in Mokina and we moved uh, about 11 years ago to uh, Blue Island for our uh, first building and we have two other buildings in Blue Island and we have the opportunity to move uh, and create a separate entity in your city and so we are here um, to talk about that today and ask uh, I guess permission to get the 6B approval. Um, which will allow us to be competitive in the marketplace. So we've uh, grown from just a small business. I started in my parents' basement to having over 50 employees. We uh, full benefits company, lots of uh, skilled labor, uh, degreed engineers, um, professional type people. What we do is we um, distribute world class uh, manufactured pumps as well as manufacture and remanufacture those pumps for major industries such as steel, oil and gas, uh, mining, wastewater. Some of our clients are companies like ExxonMobil, BP Amico, uh, the Deep Tunnel of Chicago we do the repairs for. Um, we're lucky enough to have our own training center and we're bringing um, their technical people in. So uh, I think we'd be an asset to your uh, city because we're always having people from, both from the surrounding areas and in, actually from all over the world um, to visit our facility uh, for training, uh, professional engineering credits, and so forth. So 
that's a little bit about my company. And um, we're looking forward to creating some jobs in Elsa. Uh, the particular building has been vacant for two and a half years. Uh, the last occupant left in May of uh, 2014. It's a 23,000 square foot building. Um, Scott is seeking to put some money into the building. Uh, right now it's planned to put a new driveway in and a loading dock and eventually uh, potentially putting an addition on the building to do some pump testing. So uh, we have some plans for the building. It's sitting vacant. Uh, it did have a 6B. The 6B is going to expire in two years. It has not been used the last couple of years. The, the taxpayer has filed uh, vacancy and not used a 6B. Um, we believe that the taxes with a 6B will be more than the current vacancy taxes. So we're actually increasing, would be increasing the tax revenue with the 6B as opposed to having the building totally vacant. Um, Pumping Solutions is going to free up some employees from the Blue Island location, move them to ALSIP, and then we're planning, you know, actually in the next three years of having up to 20 new employees here. So we are hoping to grow and uh, start manufacturing the pumps here and uh, assembling them. So uh, that is the plan. Um, if you ever come by 139th Street and you used to see an old rundown building and it now looks perfect, that's how we take care of our buildings. So I just want to promise you, when you see me as part of your community, you'll be proud to have me. Thank you. We and you know how that. to use that microphone, too. <laughs> yes, very, very good. <laughs> by, by the way, do you know those guys at Tuthill Pump? We do. Yes, we work with them. Long established uh, also Absolutely. business. Great business. Yeah, good people. And part of our also Industrial Association, which I'm sure that you're going to join immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions, trustees? Yeah, I've, I've got a couple. Um, you stated Hamlin Court. It says Hamlin Avenue on the... That's my mistake. It is on court. Okay. All right. And next, um, you do realize that we do have a job posting website on the village of Alsip uh, that local citizens will check every once in a while. And uh, it's absolutely free. It doesn't cost you a dime. The only thing we ask is that when you fill the position and you no longer have it available, to please let us know so they can pull it down. But like I get there again, absolutely free. Okay? Trustee Shapiro, this is not on the agenda this evening. It was supposed to be on for a presentation. So they've given the presentation. We'll have an ordinance ready for the next board meeting. Very good. Thank you very Gentlemen, thank, thank you so you very much, much for thank the you. presentation. In the business card. You already gave it. <laughs> yes, I have. Thank you very much. Standing committees. Oh, I'm sorry. I almost. Is there anybody else under the public forum who wishes to speak? Come forward, sir. Please state your name for the record. I'm Pastor Dan Willis, the senior pastor at the Lighthouse Church on 127th Street. And I'm really here tonight with a very, very sad heart. Um, We've been in the city for 16 years. I'm in my 40th year of being a pastor, starting a congregation with 16 people. It is now the largest multicultural church in the entire Chicago region. That's because of the blessing of being in ALSEP. There's 6,000 members at the Lighthouse Church now and represent 72 nations, 75% minority. So we've had tremendous growth here in ALSIP, and it's been a, a true pleasure. And, Mayor, thank you for this privilege, and to all of the board, and congratulations to the new uh, board that will be serving. So there's many tentacles to – I was worried about how much time I would have, but I'm not so worried now oh, after all the up. presentations. <laughs> so many tentacles to why I'm here tonight. Uh, but the main overall reason why I'm here is to find out why – when I represent 6,000 members, why in ALSIP would it be so difficult to get a response from you, Mayor, or from the village attorney with regard to asking to be placed on the agenda tonight or to get an apology for something we consider to be racial discrimination in the city? Why would it be so hard to just simply get communication? And that's the beginning 
of where I would start tonight. We have had many, many encounters. The last five years have been very egregious. And finally, I have, I've never appeared before here, as you know, other than to build our new church. And finally, I've drawn a line in the sand because I will not allow minorities in our community to be dis- talked to disrespectfully, disparagingly, by elected or paid village officials. And it's not right. We live in a world where things have changed. We see people drug off of airplanes, and, lo- and then people that did it lose their jobs. It's, the world is different. It cannot be like this, and it certainly shouldn't be like this in Alsip. So while there's many, many other things, I would like to say, Mayor, if you would be okay with me saying them in a public forum, as you know. Otherwise, I'd like to begin with, why is it so difficult that you, sir, after 20 emails, 15 phone calls, could not respond to let us know we could be here tonight? Well, first off, this is public comment, not a public debate. Make your comment and please sit down. So my comment, sir, I've just made, I represent 6,000 people in this community. Why could you not return my phone call? Again, it's not a debate. Nobody here is answering your questions. Then, sir, sir, would you like to have a closed meeting or would you like me to say everything that I need to say tonight in an open public You've got two minutes. Go ahead. Sir, I would have... uh, uh, No, sir. Would you like me to do that? Can you address to me why it is impossible to get a communication back from you? Is it because you acknowledge that something was done wrong, there's been racial incidents occur on our campus, and you are not willing to take responsibility? All I'm asking is a yes or no, no debate. That's what I want to know. Please sit down. Does he have the right to tell me to sit down? I have the right to have you removed. Please sit down. I I don't think that's right, Mayor, to have him sit down. Everybody else gets to talk. I want to make sure if there's any press that the pastor of the largest church in this community is being asked to sit down for confronting the mayor for racial discrimination in the city. So should I sit down or should I proceed? Why, attorney, couldn't you call me back? I haven't gotten any calls from you. So who's the, who's, received, who's the attorney that's received all of our emails that you gave us? We're not email? answering your questions, sir. It's not a debate, and it's not a trial. So then let's not have the debate. Answer the question, sir. Should you have called back? If you have, a sta- if you have statements to make, go ahead and make them. But the mayor's made it clear that he's not going to debate with you. This is public comment. I would lo- go ahead like with to have comments. a debate. I would not like to have a debate before I sit down and do a major television interview that we've been requested to do. I ask the mayor to give an apology to the people in our congregation who have been discriminated against by village officials. Is that possible? That's all I want to know. So I assume silence is no. So it is okay in Alsip to racially discriminate. Thank you very much. Moving along, anybody else have any comments this evening? Mayor, I think we need to address this concern. Sure, in a proper manner and a proper time. That gentleman has gone back and forth with our village attorneys multiple times. There's nothing else to say. Sir? I just wanted to, uh, I can't take a second here. <laughs> I want to introduce myself to the village of Alsip. I am Patrick Romko. I'm with the Boy Scouts of America. I work for the Boy Scouts of America, and I want to acknowledge that the Boy Scouts of America are currently looking to grow and to um, attain um, communication and through the school system so we can help to build the Boy Scout program back up in LSIP um, for the total available youth to the youth that we're serving today. We know that we can grow. So I just wanted to say I want you to introduce myself um, and put it in the public record that we will be um, in 2017 and 2018 actively looking to um, to get filled Boy Scout programs for age-appropriate children 
boys from the age of six all the way to the age of 21, and girls from the age of 14 to 21. So a couple of different programs, and also be entering to the opportunity to have a uh, police and fire explorer program in the community as well. So a couple of different ideas, but I just want to introduce myself and put this public record. Thank you very much for your every due diligence. May I please? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Chris. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, sir. Thank Anyone you. else? Moving along, standing committees, finance, Trustee Shapiro. <clears throat> May I have a request for the approval of a list of payroll dated April 14th, uh, 2017, as follows. Under the um, earnings of the gross payroll is $423,465.60, minus the voluntary employee deduction in taxes of $152,517.04 for a net payroll of $270,948.56. Trustee, could you uh, read that number again? I think you reversed two of those. Um, the, the first one? Uh, yes, sir, the 423 number. Uh, $423,465.60. Okay, thank you. Sorry. <clears throat> Next, I have the request for approval of accounts payable dated April 17th, 2017, as follows. Under corporate, $33,685.54. Under road and bridge, $11,577.23. Uh, motor fuel tax, $7,454.94. Nine one one. $261,844.75. Waterworks, $69,850.78. Heritage II, $18,692.82. For a grand total of all funds of $403,106.06. Next, I have the request for approval of an ordinance amending ordinance number 2016-7-2 and amending ordinance number 2016-11-4 of the village of Alsip entitled the um, for year 17 uh, May 1st, 2016 to April 30th, 2017 annual appropriations <coughs> ordinance. Kent, do you have anything uh, you want to add to that? Uh, no, this is, we normally do this at the near the end of every year. Uh, the first page is always um, within the departments to have uh, each department sort of balance out, a few things go over, we get it from other items that went under. Um, this, the last page is always uh, for items that were not, <coughs> uh, can't be handled that way and usually have reasons for that. Uh, those had explanations on them and I'm, I'm, I'm willing to go through uh, any for questions that people have. Sometimes I may push it off to the individual departments if anyone has questions. Um, and, and that's what we'll do now. Uh, but uh, Trustee Shapiro, before we're done, there's one other comment I want to make, not on the subject. Do you have any comments? Just a quick overview, if you would like more. We're sure. Um, the, again, it, it's it, within each department. Um, so sometimes the very first one, the pumper truck, the, our payment was $125 over, so we took it off of the interest. Um, we have a sales tax agreement uh, that's higher. Uh, the payout is higher than expected, but that's actually a good thing because it means we got more sales tax than we originally anticipated. Um, it's items like that. There are um, some overtimes that are higher, uh, but they again, that has to come from other parts within their own department. We're, for the supplemental, um, the big thing is uh, the the insurance. Um, we had a fairly high year. We self-insure um, to a large extent and we had some very large claims, um, a lot higher than was anticipated and that's not something that can be done within the insurance department. Uh, there was a one um, water bill too that was a uh, um, we had a company went out a few years ago, um, a very large water uh, company that company was uh, replaced with Mini Mills, um, who has been a very um, good customer of the water and, and a good um, business for the village. But we did have 
we are writing off um, the outstanding ba balance for the company that uh, disappeared. And that, that probably should have been done about a year ago. But uh, um, the water department worked with finance to get that on here now. Anything else? Um, not on that subject. Uh, on the other subject, uh, last Tuesday's meeting, I mentioned that we were going to go pricing uh, bonds the next day. We were going to market the next day. Um, we did do that. The bonds that we uh, sold go to both pay off some bonds that we currently have as well as to hold until we can call the other bonds. The, net, the sale went pretty well. Um, different, different years did better than others, but in general, uh, the net present value benefit is coming in at $367,000 of savings uh, to the taxpayers of ALSEP. Um, we just this afternoon by messenger got the documents um, needed to be signed. There are a lot of them. Um, it's one of the few times uh, I don't, I signed just a very few, uh, but both the mayor and the clerk um, have a large amount of signing to do. We do need to federal express those out tomorrow. I, I do see that. Okay. Thank you. And then uh, I'm going to ask your, I, I've talked to your office already, but I, your office is going to help do that for us. Thank you. That's all I have, Mayor. <coughs> Fire Trustee Michaels. I have a list of bills and timesheets. I request an approval for an ordinance amending the ELSA Village Code, Chapter 9, Fire Prevention and Protection, and Article I uh, in general, Section 9-4-9-6, Arm System uh, Penalty and Cost Recovery. Uh, I just want to remind the board um, that we have been discussing this for, uh, I would say, close to a year now, uh, yeah, yeah. having this discussion over this. And uh, so, Chief, do you want to give us uh, the current update? Right. What this is, it gives us a better avenue to collect um, fees that are owed to the <coughs> village from the Caltron. That is our radio alarm system we have in a village. It's been in place since 2008. Um, the system's bounced back from finance to fire to finance to fire. And, and in, the, in the time, we've lost probably, we're about 161,000 of fees that need to be collected. Um, so what this does is, is this allows us an avenue to use housing court, and that was brought up by, I believe, Trustee Dazelle, um during one of our committee meetings. So if any uh, subscriber is two cycles behind in building, um, we, will off, uh, we will issue them a uh, uh, MV citation, which brings them to housing court, uh, kind of forces their hand. Right now they're breaching a uh, contract with the village if they don't pay. And uh, it's just a one way to keep up on it so we're not behind like we have been in the past several years. That's all. Any questions, trustees? No. Okay. All right, next. Uh, thank you to, to the businesses. The Elsa Fire Department would like to thank the following businesses for providing donations to assist in the purchase of an unmanned aerial vehicle, a Jerome. Chicago Backflow, Swaparama, E&B Auto Repair, Ace Auto Rebuilders, William Quinn and Sons, Castellan, Ray Products, Admiral Steel, Cronkork and Seal, and Northern Illinois Sprinkler Advisory Board. A total of $2,750 was raised to purchase of a drone and start a drone, drone uh, program for the Village of Elsa. Chief, uh, can you give us some more, a, a little background and, and plus what it's going to be used for? Yeah, uh, the drones are, are the newer technology for the fire service. I mean, the last couple of years, anybody in the world can go out and buy a drone for a couple hundred or a couple thousand. Um, with civilians, there's really no regulations, but us as a municipality or emergency operation, we have a lot of hoops we have to jump through through the FAA, uh, and it includes a lot of training. Um, so we're grateful to the, uh, the companies that donated to our drone program. Uh, so we have purchased a drone. And uh, it's about six months to a year to get the program up and running only because we have to follow FAA regulations. We have to do a lot of submittal of uh, paperwork, and then we also have to get the people trained. So the object of the drone program is to use it for our, our emergency operations, whether it's a uh, large-scale fire, um, uh, hazardous materials incidents, such as maybe a train derailment, uh, anything where we can put this up in the air instead of sending somebody physically in the danger zone. Um, and then it's also going to be expanded to both uh, Public Works and the Water Department for anything that uh, their needs, as well as the Police Department for anything what they're looking at. So, um, again, we just got the program. It's going to take a while to get it up and running, and we're working with a lot of other municipalities that already have it in place. But it's the newest technology in uh, the fire service that we're seeing, or I should say in all emergency response right now. 
Okay, so that uh, what this will do is, uh, if you have a large fire, this will be able to have the, the uh, bird's eye view. Bird's eye view for the uh, fire uh, chief at the scene. Correct. Uh, and he could oversee problem areas before something happens where somebody gets hurt. Yeah, we'll be able to use it to monitor monitor what our operations are, or use it to look at specific hazards without uh, sending anybody in the hazard zone itself. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Next, I have a status of the new hire. Chief, you want to give us the update on that? Yeah, one of our firefighters, Kamaroski, is retiring um, uh, as of right around May 1st. Uh, he's going to be off for the six months using his sick time and vacation time. Um, he'll have, he has 20 years as of uh, January that just passed. Um, so we're hiring his replacement. So that um, uh, the gentleman's name is Jeff uh, Inawaga. Uh, he starts on days on the 24th for nine days and he'll be placed on shift May 1st. Um, so he's replacing Ken, and, and uh, uh, we hope that uh, uh, Ken's been great for 20 years. We, we hope him well in his uh, retirement. So, Thank you on that. Uh, next, I have the incentive pay request to approve the fire department's incentive pay in the amount of $23,491.46 for fiscal year 2017. Next, I have a holiday pay request to approve the holiday pay in the amount of $25,645.44 for the fiscal year 2017. Next, I have the shift commander pay. Request to approve the second half of the shift commander pay of $2,625 for fiscal year 2017. Uh, next, I have the monthly report for 2017 based, uh, based on the National Fire Incident Reporting System data. The report reads as follows. It goes from 3-1-2017 to 3-31-2017. Uh, structure fires were two. Vehicle fires were three, other fires two for total fires for the month of seven. Uh, emergency medical treatment calls, this was the ambulance calls, were 207. Uh, so it was a total of ambulance calls of 207 for the month. Hazardous condition calls were seven, service calls were 19, good intent calls were 15. Um, false calls, total false calls for the month were 36. Total calls for the month, 291 calls. Total fire dollar loss and total dollar loss was $12,700 for the month. Thank you. Is there anything else you want to add, Chief? Did I miss anything? No, I missed one meeting, so I got seven things on today's agenda, so thank you. <laughs> okay, that's all I have, Mayor. Police, Trustee Shapiro. Mayor, other than the normal list of bills and timesheets, I have no report. Public Works, Trustee Dwyer. Uh, Mike Freider from Public Works would like to request authorization from the Village Board to hire six full-time temporary employees for the summer session. Each employee will work 40 hours per week for a maximum of 14 weeks. Start dates will vary and all employees are required to pass a physical drug test before hiring. This expenditure has been approved, appropriated for the 2017-18 annual budget. Uh, returning employees receive hiring preference. Any questions, please contact Mike Freider. I also have a presentation of the March monthly activity report, um, 664.5 hours. Total hours were doing regrading of parkways, pothole patching, remove torn banners on Cicero, inspect replace signs, miscellaneous work orders, and performing general garage and equipment maintenance and administrative duties. Um, 225.75 total hours were spent storm cleanup okay, and miscellaneous work orders intending to locate. And that's all I have under public works. That's all I have under public works. Thank you. <laughs> Building Trustee Michaels. I have no report, Mayor. Shore and Water Trustee Dizel. Presentation of list of bills, employee time records. And the request authorization to advertise for the bid for the 2017 grounds restoration program that provides for the permanent restoration of streets and parkways that have been excavated for water main repairs. Also the request for approval to hire four part-time summer personnel for a period not to exceed 14 weeks. That's all I have, Mayor. Licensed Trustee Ryan. The license committee requests approval for a list of licenses dated today, April 17, 2017. We had a few Actually, we have uh, quite a few uh, new, biz new business, uh, I'm sorry, license renewal applications, are obviously, at the end of the fiscal year. So the license um, off the building office is busy with those right now. We had a new application submitted for Motor Cars Express, which is an existing business. So maybe 
they're doing something internally at 12350 South Kedvale. Uh, we also had a new business application, business license application from ITV Services Corporation. They're going to be located at 4627 West 120th Place. This is going to be a semi truck repair business. Uh, another one from AT Eco, it's E C O ATM LLC. They'll be located at 12150 South Pulaski. This is a recycling kiosk um, and vending inside the store, probably for uh, like bottles and so forth. Another one from A Auto and Truck Service over at 11551 South Ridgeland. That's a truck repair and towing business. Uh, they were requesting a new license as well. So that's all we have, sir. Economic Development Trustee Ryan. Uh, the Economic Development Committee we, uh, would request for approval of a resolution approving a redevelopment agreement at 11550 South Pulaski Road. This is Elsip Lawnmower Incorporated. Uh, Elsip Lawnmower submitted an application some time ago. Um, it's a small job that they're going to participate in to have the parking lot resurfaced, which is a TIF eligible expense with the village um, approving 80% of that purchase, uh, of that agreement, I should say, with the um, landowner picking up 20% of that. Uh, we also have a presentation of the economic development uh, activities report. We had a meeting earlier this evening that I'll submit to the clerk's office that can be printed for all of the trustees to review at the next meeting. Uh, in short, uh, Elsa Blomar, as I just spoke of, uh, participated in the TIF and the, in the Pulaski Avenue TIF program that we have to help enhance local businesses uh, using a bid of $22,757. The village's portion of that will be $18,206. Um, also, we have talk right now, um, Checkers Restaurant is uh, has a budget established and they're going to be reopening the Checkers at some point. Um, uh, Chris, Mr. Mannheim, well, what's the timeline on that too? I forgot to ask at the meeting. Yes. Okay. Okay, so for the record, it's to be determined. I, I, we forgot to ask that at, at the meeting. Um, also, uh, we talked about the facade uh, improvement guidelines that will be distributed again to all, all of the um, TIF-eligible businesses along Pulaski, as well as the, um, the village needs to identify. We're going to talk about identifying a new administrative person as a contact here at the village hall. The committee discussed uh, temporarily having that work that contact directed to the building department and then brought back to the back to the Manheim group as such then too, so we can work together with them. Um, that's all we have for right now, Thanks, sir. Special committee reports, village properties, Trustee Michaels. I have a list of bills and the request for approval to hire six part-time summer personnel for a period not to exceed 14 weeks. There will be two employees at Heritage One, two employees at Heritage Two, and two employees at the Village Hall. That's all I have, Mayor. Insurance, Trustee McGreal. Uh, I'll be contacting the Insurance Committee members to set up an Insurance Committee meeting. Um, other than that, I have no report. Ordinance of Legislation, Trustee Dizel. Um, I had on here for an action item for the motion to reconsider the adoption of the Employee Handbook and override Mayor Kitching's veto. Uh, I guess, uh, Madam Attorney, uh, it was, was brought out last week um, it didn't appear that this was an item which could be subject to veto based on 65 ILCS 5 3.1-40-40. And in addition to that, um, the mayor didn't distribute the written veto message as required by state law. So should we move on this? Is it negated? Uh, what's your, your drug? It's, it's really up to you, but I, if it's on the agenda, I... Don't see any harm in taking okay. the vote on it. Then I would make the motion to reconsider the adoption of the employee handbook and override Mayor v. Kitching's veto. Second. We have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Roll call number one, Trustee Shapiro. 
I still think this is something for the new board, so I abstain. Trustee McGreal. Yes. Trustee Dizel. Yes. Trustee Ryan. Yes. Trustee Michaels. Yes. Trustee Dwyer. Yes. Motion carries to adopt the employee handbook and override Mayor Kitchen's veto. That's all, Mayor. <clears throat> I guess that'll work out in the courts. Um, I would like to add to that that I've read that thing pretty thoroughly, and you passed a, a uh, ordinance not too long ago um, accepting the IG from the county, and in that ordinance you were supposed to pro provide a path for a employee to get there, and you've not done anything, and and the uh, handbook does not address that at all. So I, I, I'm totally frustrated with it. But the courts will sort it all out later. Then we'll wait for the courts, Mayor. I'm sorry. I said then we'll wait for the courts. All righty then. It Trustee Ryan. Uh, no report this evening. Boat launch, Trustee Ryan. Uh, boat launch uh, in its second week of operation for the season took in approximately $190, and um, it's looking. The facilities look great. I spoke with Mr. Hardy this evening. Uh, we're doing well out there, so everyone's welcome to use the boat launch at this time of the season. That's all. Planning and zoning, Trustee Dwyer. No report. Human resources, Trustee Dwyer. I have a request for approval of a vacation rollover 10 days, name withheld pursuant to HIPAA rights to be taken by the end of the month of June 2017 per the human or the recent Human Resources Committee meeting. I also have a presentation of the minutes of the March 28, 2017 Human Resources Committee. Also, if there are any students or young adults interested in summer work, please go to our website and fill out an application. And that's all I have under Human Resources. Are there any pr presentations, petitions, or communications which we have not covered under ordinary business? Trustees, are there any items you wish to remove from the consent agenda? I want to be the first one. I am sorry. I am removing item C because you did not see the minutes from the April 11th meeting. Can you do that? <laughs> yeah. okay. I'd like to remove uh, letter P, please. P? I'd like to remove um, letter E. I'm sorry, what was the last one? E. E? Like Edward. I need a motion to establish the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Madam Clerk, would you add the remaining information and then please call the roll? A should read $423,465.60. B should be $403,106.06. C has been removed. The trustees had not received those minutes. E has been removed. F will now be ordinance number 2017-4-2. G will be resolution number 2017-4-R-2. H will now be resolution number 2017-4-R-3. P has been removed from the consent agenda also. Roll call number two, Trustee Shapiro? Yes. Trustee McGreal? Yes. Trustee Dizel? Yes. Trustee Ryan? Yes. Trustee Michaels? Yes. Trustee Dwyer? Yes. Motion carries to establish. Entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Second. Motion a second, Madam Clerk. Please call the roll. Roll call number three.
Trustee Shapiro? Yes. Trustee McGreal? Yes. Trustee Dizel? Yes. Trustee Ryan? Yes. Trustee Michaels? Yes. Trustee Dwyer? Yes. Um, approve the consent agenda. Motion carried. Returning to item hmm? C, which was removed uh, by the clerk. Uh, item E, approval of an approval of an approval of an ordinance amending ordinance number 2016-7-2 and amended ordinance number 2016-11-4 of the village of Alsip entitled the fiscal year 17 May 1st 2016 April 30th 2017 annual appropriations ordinance I just like an individual vote mayor mayor since you read it that's my motion <laughs> well, that's cheating. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Roll call number four. Trustee Shapiro? Yes. Trustee McGreal? No. Trustee Dizel? Yes. Trustee Ryan? Yes. Trustee Michaels? Yes. Trustee Dwyer? Yes. Motion carries. That will now be ordinance number 2017-4-3. Next is item P, approval of a vacation rollover 10 days, name withheld pursuant to HIPAA privacy rights to be taken by the end of the month, June 2017, per the recent Human Resources Committee meeting. Mayor, I, I pulled this. Um, um, I was not present uh, in the meeting when this was discussed. Uh, that's that's the first thing. So I really have to abstain from it. But furthermore, I disagree with it anyway. I don't like this vacation rollover stuff. We gave that up. We, we talked about not rolling over vacations, and we're back doing it again. So that's just my opinion. I'd like to go to a separate roll call vote, Mayor. Just for clarification, too, Trustee, that was done because of the uh, a short-term disability to an employee. So. Right. Right, and she wasn't. She was not available to take those days. Is that that's the, the reason for is, it? Is that the first time or second time? I believe it is second time. Second me. time, okay. And there was other times that were available, uh, many times. So, let's move on for. We'll I think call there's vote. extraordinary circumstances in this situation. She was very ill, and she couldn't take the vacation. She came in this person that we're talking about on her days off. So, I think that's kind of. Uh, you know, you're setting a bad precedent, though. Not really. It's about human kindness. And that's just my opinion. Yeah, and it should be done on an individual basis. I couldn't agree more. Right. And that's where we are now. Yep. So, Mayor, I'd make the uh, approval to uh, <coughs> of the vacation rollover 10 days and uh, to be taken by the end of the month. Oh, second. June, yeah, June 17th. Yeah. Yep. We have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Roll call number five, Trustee Shapiro. No. Trustee McGreal. Yes. Trustee Dizel. Yes. Trustee Ryan. Yes. Trustee Michaels. Yes. Trustee Dwyer. Yes. Motion carries to allow a vacation rollover for 10 days by to be taken by the end of month, June 2017. Under unfinished business, yeah, I'd, I'd like to I'd call like to on our village attorney. Oh. I'd like to call on our village attorney to speak to the gentleman who came to the microphone earlier um, in the boardroom, and uh, a little clarification is necessary. Right, you'd ask what was going on. I received several emails from village staff. Um, the, from and from Court Van Huysen, who had had requests from the pastor's secretary to be placed on a closed session agenda to discuss threatened litigation. There was no other information provided. To my knowledge, there's been no claim, nothing in writing submitted by the pastor as to what any of this is about. I advise that it's not appropriate to place to have private citizens placing items on your agenda 
with no explanation as to what they were for without your permission or consent that items to be placed on the agenda are to be placed on there by the mayor and the trustees and the clerk where appropriate. Um, tonight was the first time that I heard what exactly the allegation was and we still didn't get anything specific, just some racial discrimination. Um, I know in the past there have been issues with code compliance and um, paying of fees by this property owner. Um, you know, uh, there seems to be a uh, pattern of attention getting rather than trying to resolve an issue or even telling us what it is. Uh, uh, the unfortunate thing is, is that it's coming to light here now right. and the, the justification that you're bringing forth, I think that had the pastor been here, maybe a little bit of that dialogue or to, to sit there and say, you know what, look, let's go off to the side here and have a little bit of a discussion. And then if you can't come to some sort of an agreement, then uh, allow each side to sit there and, and air their differences. But he, at this point in time, the unfortunate thing is, is that, you know, we let the gentleman walk out of the room without sitting there and, and having any discussion about it. And now all of a sudden we're going to have a discussion when it's only one-sided. It's not proper. No, I'm just telling you what this. Oh, and I appreciate the, the heads up sequence on of events was <clears throat> he, you know, they were advised by staff that they could submit something in writing because we still don't even know what it is. You know, they yeah, speak well, in public forum, yeah. submit something in writing, ask for an appointment with the mayor. To my knowledge, none of those things were done. So he's given opportunities to tell us what his concerns are and has chosen not to do that. Well, yeah. I would hope that somebody would sit there and, and reach out to the gentleman and find out what things are so that we can resolve these matters. Under advice right. of counsel, I was told not to talk to him. Um, because of the threat of litigation um, and I'm still not going to talk to him and if the gentleman has issues with our fire chief our police chief our public works director our just about every department here and has gone back and forth with our attorneys multiple times I'm going to take my attorney's advice and just Unfortunately, I the trustees are never aware of these situations. So then somebody comes here and we sit here and say nothing because we are not privy to this information. That's unfortunate because I don't like to sit here and have somebody accuse the village of also it being prejudiced and trustees and the mayor and the attorney sit here and say nothing. I, I still don't know what his complaint is. He's well, never then said we it. should have found out or somebody should have found out if he said he called how many times and, and, and sent messages to the attorney. We, we asked him to state what it was and he never would. Well, then, can I ask for a point of clarification? Because the mayor just said it was the police chief, the fire chief, and the public works director. And if that's being facetious, when you're talking about the allegation he's making, I'm hoping that he was being general, because if there is some sort of complaint along that line no. on his desk, then I would like to address that. But if that complaint isn't on his desk, then I would like that clarified tonight in front of the public, because I have a great rapport with him. <laughs> so I, I'd like it clarified also, because it's the very first I've heard of it. So, and it's hard to address that. You know, it sounds like you tried to contact the village multiple times it, he did he was we was asked what it was about and he wouldn't say he just wanted to be on the agenda he wouldn't say what it was how was that communication was that communication email, email? be happy to show you all the emails nothing gets done by email you have a good relationship madam turn can yeah, i ask he them, never I, called he had a, he had his secretary send emails i got it can i ask them they're right uh, here uh, okay. I, no you're fine I, um can i ask them madam attorney are, are you going to schedule a meeting with the gentleman if you'd, like, if you'd like me to, I'd be happy to. I would appreciate that. Yeah. Or if the police chief has this rapport already, I'd be perhaps happy the to police chief can reach out to the gentleman. I, and I, I'm going to be honest with you. I would love to do that, and I'll do it tonight, because the alternative could be a bunch of people sitting in front of the village all tomorrow, the way this just went down. Oh, don't laugh. 
he can rally 60, 80 people for a charity. And if it's a matter of a confusion or lack of communication or whatever, yeah, let's get out in front of this thing. I'll be more happy to alleviate it, and I'll dedicate the time, ounce of prevention, and it can save us a lot of what he was alleging is speaking to the press, and no one's ever going to remember a singular name. All they're going to see is the village of Alston. It sounds like he would like to just sit down and talk to someone, so I'd appreciate it if you did that. I'll do whatever I have to tonight to find out where he's at and sit him down and find out what his concerns are. And also maybe you can make aware that the village board did not, was not aware of this, and we do not feel that way. We don't even know what the issues are, so we weren't privy to that. I had a second issue, Madam Attorney. Regarding the unfinished business, earlier this evening we had an economic development committee meeting. We need to go into executive session to discuss properties. Right. You have it there? Yeah. Thank you. I want to wait until I get through with. Thank you. Yeah, I just had to add on with the closed session. I spoke to Trustee Dizel. He has the appropriate. Yes. Any new business before the board? Okay, go. We've got two closed sessions set for this evening. One is the discuss litigation, one a action against affecting our behalf. The particular public body has been filed and is pending before a court or administrative tribunal or when the public body finds that an action is probable or imminent, in which case the basis for the findings shall be recorded and entered into the minutes of the closed meeting pursuant to 5 ILCS 120-2 C11. Also, the purchase or lease of real property for the use of the public body, including meetings held for the purpose of discussing whether a particular parcel should be acquired. That's 5 ILCS 120-2 C5. A second. To the ICLS. ILCS. ILCS. ICLS is what it says here. Yeah, it's a typo. All righty then. Was there a second? I did. Yes. Motion and a second to go to executive session. Roll call number six to go into closed session. Trustee Shapiro. Yes. Trustee McGreal. Yes. Trustee Dizel. Yes. Trustee Ryan. Yes. Trustee Michaels. Yes. Trustee DeWire. Yes. Motion carries to go into closed session. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be coming back in here for adjournment. No other votes will be taken this evening. You're welcome to stick around if you like. I wouldn't. Ten minutes across the hall, please. Yeah, I guess so.